Hello, for a book scavengers. You might be wondering what is on my head. Well, I have fashioned some socks into a headband because just because it's crazy sock day doesn't mean that they have to be on your feet. The last thing that we read on Friday was this paragraph. Out of the darkness behind Clyde, a voice growled, make that four. There was a loud whack and Clyde dropped to his knees. The gun flew out of Clyde's hand and skidded across the concrete. Mr. Amora dropped to a crouch, covering his head, and peeked up, scanning the ground. There! Matthew pointed at his flush poster at the gun, and James ran to retrieve it. Unfortunately, Barry did too, and got to the gun first. Clyde's attacker stepped under a lamppost, bending over Clyde to make sure he was knocked out. The dreadlocks would have been recognizable anywhere. Hollister? Emily asked. I hope I see you kids there, but not under these circumstances, Hollister said. Emily didn't have time to dwell on all the questions Hollister's presence raised. Barry swung the gun back and forth. Don't stand there, do something, Mr. Remora hissed. What am I supposed to do? Barry shouted. You're supposed to get me that manuscript by any means possible, Mr. Remora said. Mr. Remora jabbed a finger in Emily's direction, punctuating every word. Get me that manuscript. Hollister remained crouched next to the unconscious Clyde. He used one hand to clamp together Clyde's limp wrist while the other hand dug into his own pocket. Leon, get a hold of yourself, Hollister said. You stay out of this. Mr. Remora didn't even look Hollister's way. Hand me the gun, Barry. They're just kids, Barry said. Don't let them talk to you like that, Matthew piped up. Barry swung the gun toward Matthew. Emily pressed the manuscript even more tightly to her chest. He's using you, man, Matthew said. He doesn't care about you. All he cares about is getting some stupid old manuscript. That is all you care about. Barry swung the gun back to Mr. Remora. Barry, Mr. Remora said in a calm, even voice. That's not true. You're my flesh and blood. Give me the gun and I'll pay you double. How much is he paying you? James asked. $500, Barry muttered. That's all, Matthew said. You know he's going to make bank on that musty old stack of papers my sister's holding, right? He wouldn't have gone to all this trouble if he was only going to make a couple thousand dollars. Don't listen to him, Mr. Morris said. He's just a kid. But what Matthew said had sunk in. You don't care about me, Barry said. All you care about are books. Faintly in the distance, Emily heard the wail of sirens. I called the police. Hollister removed his hand from his pocket to reveal a lit up phone. They'll be here <coughs> any minute. Good, Barry muttered, his gun trained on Mr. Amora. I'm sick of this gig. And that concludes chapter 39. Questions that you might have would be, what is Hollister doing there? How did Hollister know to be there? Is thinking about the ways that he's connected to Mr. Griswold, the ways Mr. Remora is connected to Mr. Griswold. A lot of questions can be raised. Chapter 40 will be read tomorrow.